Well, because you asked for it, here we go again. More from How to Win a Nintendo Games by Jeff Robin. Um, I'm going to go through a couple that you suggested. First one, my old friend, Castlevania. I had this as a kid, it didn't help. Type, Horror Search and Destroy. Not horror, horror. Objective. Because you're one brave soul, you've decided to enter the monster-infested Castlevania and slay the evil Count. There are six different floors, colon. Do you have the courage and skill to make your way through them all? Layout. The eerie estate is recreated in all its dusty detail, from the main floor to the watery dungeons to the monster-infested grounds. Recreated. It's like they're implying that it's, this is an actual castle that exists somewhere, and they recreated it for the game. It must be a very linear castle. It's not even very wide, because you can only move in a line, I guess. Huh. Scroll. The hero searches from left to right, with a limited amount of top to bottom play. Because, yeah, that's so important to know. Because I, I can play games that scroll left to right just fine, but if they go up and down, I, I fucking suck at them, honestly. When you enter the creaking gates, you have only a whip, 16 power units, and a modest jumping and ducking ability. As you travel along, you can obtain other weapons and defenses, dot dot dot, all of which consumes hearts as they operate. I guess that's one way of putting it. Each new weapon you collect replaces the one you got before it. Concealed inside creatures, candles, and or stones are a dagger, the first weapon you'll find, ellipses, inside a brazier before you enter the house. A boomerang, a cross which kills every monster on the screen, invisibility potion which protects you from harm for five seconds. See, now he's, he's about right. Five seconds is, like, useless, really. A star mace which boosts the power of your whip. Okay. Bottled fire bombs, an axe, a watch which freezes the enemy for five seconds at one heart per second. A pork chop, which adds some of the power you may have lost. Magic crystals, obtainable only from the final creature on each floor, which restore all the power you lost. Double shots and triple shots, which boost the effectiveness of your weapons. Uh, just going back for a minute, he calls them fire bombs. I guess, I guess that's what they technically were in the first game, but they were holy water. That's not mince words. They were holy water. But they couldn't use the word holy in a Nintendo game because of Nintendo censorship at the time, so. It's just like the, the boomerang, it's a cross. Yet they call it a cross when it's a rosary. So, the boomerang is a cross and the cross is a rosary. But yeah, the boomerang, no boomerang, I guess there are some boomerangs that are shaped like that, but. No, it's, Nintendo censorship, what are you going to do about it? Players begin the game with 10 hearts. As you travel, you now have small and large hearts, which provide 1 and 5 extra shots with each weapon, respectively. Once they're uncovered, all objects remain on screen for 5 seconds. Don't forget to grab the magic crystal left behind... Oh, man. <sighs> Don't forget to grab the magic crystal left behind when each end-of-level monster dies. As noted earlier, these replenish all of your power units. Also, it's the only way to end the level. I mean, are you just going to sit there and let the time run out when you have the crystal there? I'm, I'm sure that's happened to some people. Like, they they run out of time, they have like two seconds left after they kill the boss. And Hero's weaknesses. Getting struck by enemies robs the hero of one or more of his 16 power units. When they're all drained, he's dead. That's a blunt way of putting it. He also dies when he's knocked or falls off a ledge. Primarily knocked off a ledge than falls off a ledge, that's what I imagine. About your enemies. The house is chock full of them. <laughs> At the end of each level, there are increasingly more powerful foes. The Phantom Bat, Queen Medusas. These are the only two who can be affected by the watch. See hero's powers above. As if we forget in the ten seconds it takes to read it. The Mummy Men, which fling lethal wrappings your way. The Frankenstein Monster, and Igor, who climbs from the monster's shoulder and attacks you separately. The Grim Reaper, it hurls a rain of scythes. And finally, the evil Count himself. 
Each floor is also inhabited by lesser demons, such as zombies, black leopards, fishmen who spit fire, flying medusae, ravens, bats, eagles who drop rocks on you, skeletons that hurl deadly bones your way, ghosts, hunchbacks, axemen, skeledragons, and others. What did they leave out? I guess the crushers on the second level. The two-headed fireball spitting things. Eh. All robbed the hero of endurance points. <laughs> uh, endurance points. Most can be slain with just a crack of the whip, though more powerful weapons work better. Menu. There's only the one game. Way to stick to your layout. For... Timer. The clock, counting down in real time, gives you more time for more difficult levels. That is 300 seconds for the first floor, 400 for the second, and so on. Scoring. You earn points for killing monsters. For example, 100 for the zombies, which are the first creatures you face. 300 for the fishmen. 3,000 for the phantom bat and mummy man. 5,000 for Frankenstein. 7,000 for the Grim Reaper. And a sanguinary 50,000 for the Count himself. Sanguinary. That's a word you don't hear every day. Extra points are awarded if you slaughter two creatures with one use of a weapon. For example, two zombies with one snap of your whip. You also get points for finding money bags, treasure chests, crowns, and other glowing objects located inside floors, stones, or monsters. Patterns. The house hasn't changed for centuries. It won't change from game to game. Nor will the coming of the creatures a location of most of the weapons and goods you have to offer. I, I guess that's good, because everybody knows Castlevania is a pretty damn hard game, so knowing about the patterns and everything, that's really helpful. Beginner strategy. Whip the braziers outside the mansion. The last one will give you a dagger. Don't go right inside the castle. Jump over the door to its right, and a bulging... Jump over the door to its right. You're approaching from the left, so there's no other way to... There's no other way to do that. Jump over the door to its right and a bulging money bag will appear behind you. Upon entering, kill the zombies and watch out for the panthers on the upper level. Whip the last block of the panther staircase. A money bag is there. Before going downstairs, the steps are on the far left, set in the floor. You'll know to go there when you can't leap the gap in the above ground staircase. Head to the ground level and crack the bottom two blocks on the thick wall to the far right. A pork chop is interred there. I guess he's bringing out the thesaurus again. Be alert. A bat will attack when you go to get it. If you whip too soon, anything it's carrying will be frozen in the stones. So what? Odds of it dropping anything are pretty low. Really. Going below, don't dawdle. The fishmen will hop from the waters quickly and in increasing numbers. If you let them collect, their fireballs will knock you into the water. If one of them does unleash his flaming halitosis, duck and whip him from a crouching position! You no, know, it, it has an exclamation mark right there. Your whip is sufficient to slay these beasts. Okay, whip as a noun is capitalized, but whip as a verb is not. While you're down there, you may wish to drop to the second lowest level of blocks, on the right. Whip the last block of the ledge you were on. A money bag is hidden there. Drop down to the lowest block to claim it, but watch out. Fishmen will also be spilling off the ledge onto the block. Going back upstairs, make sure you obtain two items. The axe, located in the candle at the room of the last staircase, just before the phantom bat's room. This would be a lot easier to have some pictures in here to know exactly where they're talking about. And the double shot, inside the bat room. Inside the bat room. But there's a toilet in there. Inside the bat room, go to the two blocks on the right. Leap over them and whip the one on the right. When the bat arrives, fling axes at it. Three shots plus a final fare thee well crack of the whip will send the monster down in flames. Be sure to pick up the crystal that appears after you kill him. Nah, it doesn't actually say that, but it should. The way he keeps carping on the crystal that it is impossible to move on without collecting it, but don't forget to collect it anyway. Now, honestly, if you can if you can manage to not pick up the crystal, I want to see that. I want to see a video of you skipping the crystal in Castlevania. That's your assignment today, people. On the second floor, whip the candle just above you to get the boomerang. Climb the first staircase. Stop on the ledge, hop up, and kill the Black Knight with the boomerang. Then face right, whip the wall, and claim the crown. 
It doesn't say that you have to crouch down inside the little hole. Yeah, it, it just says, face right, whip the wall, and claim the crown. You have to crouch to make the crown appear, I think. You have to walk into the... Eh, whatever. Continue, and when you see a knight standing on a ledge below you, hop onto the stone on its left, break the top block directly to your right to expose a double shot. Hop back up and get it. When you pre As you press on, Medusa heads will attack in an oscilloscope wave motion. Proceed normally, but don't hesitate to back up, whip them, or duck if you're going to collide. Two steps ahead and one step back isn't bad for this phase. If you're tired of your boomerang, whip the candle in the last window to get a dagger. Wh who would switch out the boomerang for the dagger? Use it or your whip to kill the knights on the other side. Three lashes will do it, two daggers, or one toss of the boomerang. Again, right here, he just said that the dagger is weaker than the boomerang, but again... Eh. Go slowly, though, for a treasure chest may appear behind you, below the window. That's the one you have to crouch for. Again, he doesn't say where, he just says it may appear. Way to be vague, Jeff. When you ascend, you'll be besieged from the right by more Medusa. These creatures you'll have to whip. With italics for emphasis there. Wait until one is waist high, whip it to death, then jump. <laughs> Surprisingly violent for uh, for something that was so censored by Nintendo. Surprisingly violent descriptions in these books. Whip it to death! Then jump. Wait, whip the next one, then jump. When you reach the two knights, make sure you stop on the topmost pair of rocks. There's another pork chop here. There's also a watch in the candle to the right of the first moving ledge. Get it. Later, when you pass through the door on the far left, you'll find another pork chop buried in the brick on the left side of the ledge you're on. This is reading like a Half-Life, Full-Life Consequences. Then John Freeman had to go to the place where his brother was. Upon reaching the trio of presses, the moving ceilings, thanks for clarifying that, use the watch to freeze them and run through. Don't run so fast, though, that you pass up the double shot on the other side, in the bottom brick on the left. In the bottom brick on the left. When you come to the cannons, okay, so that's what they're called. The skeletal fire guys that shoot in both directions, apparently he calls them cannons. When you come to the cannons, approach them by whipping their fireballs and inching forward until you can whip the stone heads themselves. Are they stone? I thought they were bone. Whip the bone heads, come on. This stuff writes itself. Venture to the top ledge, ellipses, the lair of Queen Medusa. Woo! The best thing to do when she arrives is to use the watch to stop her, then use your whip on her. It will take 16 lashes to destroy her. If you can get the holy water, you can just breeze through every one of these bosses. As you start across the third... F Wait, that's it? <laughs> that's all it says about the Queen Medusa. The best thing to do when you she arrives is use the watch to stop her and then use your whip on her. It'll take 16 lashes to destroy her. And that's all it says. As you start across the third floor, you can get the fire bombs hidden right at the beginning. Though, frankly, your whip works just as well. The holy water is the best weapon in the fucking game! If you need it, also grab the pork chop in the second of the stone ledges overhead. Whenever you defeat a skeleton, pass over the defeated monster post haste. This bony breed has a nasty habit of rising almost at once from their own bone heap. Following the first skeleton attack, you'll find an axe in one of the candles. Don't pass it up, as it'll come in handy for the mummies. Or you can use the holy water that he said to pass up. The holy water is especially good against the mummies because you don't have to worry about aiming as well. Then the holy water holds them in place. You just fire it off and they're gone. When you finally do face the moldering monsters, take a hit if necessary, but get them to stand on the same side of the ledge. It's much easier to kill them together. That's true. It's also much easier to kill them if you have the holy water! Advanced strategy. As you start the fourth floor, you'll find just what you were yearning for. More fishmen. I'm glad he has a sense of humor about this. Kill them as before, then get on the raft. Don't let down your guard here. Those stalactites aren't just for decoration. If you don't duck, they'll club you and send you for a fatal dip in the swamp. It's acting as if the stalactites have a mind of their own. Like they'll drop down and whack you in the head. 
Instead, they're just obstacles. In, in fact, they are just obstacles. They're just tiles, just like everything else. That you just have to duck under. When you reach land, the eagles won't give you much trouble. Yeah, they will. They'll drop hunchbacks on you and boulders and shit. Not so the Skeletal Dragons. In order to beat them, there are three in succession. You must act quickly. As soon as the monster's neck bends into a V shape, jump into the bottom of the V. The neck actually bends slightly lower than the floor, so in essence you'll be standing on stone, not vertebrae. Leap up at once before the neck rises. Turn and strike the creature repeatedly behind the head to kill it. That is a really risky way of doing it. I, I guess it works if you're really good. I found it's just easier to just stand in front of them and whip them. Or use the holy water. And just whip them and, and hit their shots to prevent it. I Golly, jeez. That's the most risky way of doing it. In case you're power hungry, find a pork chop in the stone where the second monster's neck was rooted. After you kill the third skeleton dragon, you'll face Frankenstein's monster. Well, at least he got that part right. Everybody calls it Frankenstein. Frankenstein was the doctor. Everybody knows that. Let's go on. Keep attacking the lumbering monsters while ducking Igor and his fireballs. When the monster dies, his manic aid perishes as well. The fifth level is far more difficult than any of the others. I'm going to jump ahead a bit. When you face the Royal Axemen, you'll also be attacked by Medusa Heads. By this time, you'll have replaced the fire bombs with a boomerang. Move slowly here in spurts, firing at the Axemen while avoiding Medusa Heads. Many of your throws will hit the Heads and Axes instead of the Axemen. Don't worry, there are double and triple shots to be found in these. Okay, I guess this is kind of good advice. Because the boomerang is really good in that... The boomerang is really good in that in that hallway, but once you get to the Grim Reaper, you are gonna want the holy water just to freeze the Grim Reaper in place. When you get to the Reaper's room, go to the center and jumping immediately begin throwing your boomerang to the right. The Reaper will descend from the ceiling on that side. Get as many hits in before the monster starts tossing scythes, and you have to start ducking and dodging, marshaling all of your skills you require at this point. Head up to the 6th floor, and your confrontation with the Count. And that's where the section ends. Go up to the 6th floor where you'll fight the Count. Good luck! Par! Racking up 30,000 points per floor is a good day's exorcism. NES Advantage. Being able to keep the button depressed for rapid whipping is convenient, though not significantly advantageous. Training Tips. You'll learn to master your hero's powers easily enough. The key to winning is knowing where you can find all the power boosters. Power boosters again! The key to winning is knowing where you can find all the power boosters, money bags, and the like. Make your way through the house using the continue mode, paying little attention to the time, just trying to uncover weapons and treasure. Rating. Apart from being fun and challenging, and fraught with things to explore and discover, the game has incredible atmosphere and memorable monsters, as well as a chilling musical score. Some creaky sound effects would have been nice though. Challenge A, Graphics A, Sound Effects B. Hey. <laughs> I mean, okay, all told, I suppose it would be really helpful if you don't know what the fuck you're doing in Castlevania. But again, some of the descriptions in here are so vague. And yet, yeah, you will, you don't want to lose your holy water. The holy water is godly against... Well, yeah, appropriately enough, the holy water is godly against the bosses. And for our second feature today, we have... Metroid. Type, science fiction quest. Objective, it's the year 2005. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. It's the year 2005. Half a decade after the Cosmic Congress known as the Galactic Federation has been established. Peace and contentment reign until space pirates steal the only known specimen of a Metroid, a life form newly discovered on the world SR-388, a creature believed to have wiped out all other life forms on that planet. Yeah, I guess when you go there in Metroid 2, that's why there's nothing else there. 
Fearing that the pirates are going to cause the monster to multiply and send it against the world of the Federation, Federation police dispatch space hunter Samus Aran, a powerful cyborg, to the pirate's planet Zebes. There, Samus must penetrate the mazes inside the world, avoid monsters and pitfalls, collect various power sources, defeat the mini-bosses and Mother Brain, and destroy Metroids. Yeah. Why would you defeat the mini-bosses? They're an awesome video game band. Layout. The planet's interior is a dark world of caverns and metallic corridors, floating platforms, fiery lava pits, and creatures that flit about or lie in wait. The five sections of the alien headquarters are Turian, Brinstar, Norfair, Mini Boss Hideout 1, and Mini Boss Hideout 2. They got kind of lazy with those last two, I guess. Again, they don't talk about uh, Crate or Ridley. No, they're just called Mini Bosses. Scroll. The image moves from side to side or up and down as Samus barrels his way through Zebes. At the start, Samus has just a blaster and the ability to make powerful jumps. Along the way, he collects the following weapons and or power boosters. Again with the power boosters. Maru Mari, which enables him to become a ball and roll through tight spots. The long beam, which boosts the range of his gun. Missiles, which pack far more firepower than his measly laser gun. There are five missiles in each missile site you capture. Missile sight. Okay. An energy tank, which allows Samus to store extra energy. Bombs, an ice beam, which freezes objects. A wave beam, which radiates in several directions at once. No. Shoots in one direction in a wave. You said oscilloscope in Castlevania. No oscilloscope in Metroid? High jump, wing boost that boosts the cyborg's jumping capacity by 150%. That's probably wrong, I'm gonna check my math later. The screw attack, a buzzsaw like attribute that allows Samus to spin and slash and post stupid video game related videos on the internet. What? And Varya, which diminishes by 50% any power loss Samus may have suffered. Okay, Yoda. <laughs> Why do they have to phrase it like that? Vario, which diminishes by 50% any power loss Savage may suffer. Why not just say it reduces the damage Samus takes by half? People don't understand percents. You say something like 50% and people just go, uh, uh-huh. Say half. People understand half. Even saying divide by two, not a lot of people get that. Hero's weaknesses. Contact with anything but the walls, floors, and ceiling cost Samus power. About your enemies. Metroid may well be the most thickly populated video game in history. <laughs> the monsters are Mellows, Zebs, Zubers, The Scree, Rios, Rippers, Wavers, Mimus, Gigas, Zelas, Sidehoppers, Melas, Nove, which are covered with fire resistant wool. Okay. Gamets, Rippers 2, tougher than their cousins. Dragons, Violas, Multiviolas, Holtzes, and Desgigas. Of course, just a list of creatures. Doesn't say what they do or anything. Who the fuck cares? Okay, you know what they're called, but... You don't know... It doesn't associate any of these names which, with what they do. So you have a list of names... The only one that it tells you exactly what they are are the Nove, or Novas, depending on what your way of pluralizing that word is, which are the, are the fire guys you find in uh, Norfair. The little fire looking dudes that look like they're on fire, but apparently it's fire resistant wool. And that's all you have. It's just a list of enemies, but nothing to compare it against. These enemies are all insect or bat-like, flying, hopping, or slithering about the caverns. When these enemies die, they may leave behind purple power balls or missiles, which Samus can collect to add to his arsenal. They usually remain on the screen for 10 seconds before banishing. There are also mini-bosses, Kraid and Ridley. Kraid fires missiles from his belly, Ridley spits flame, and of course there's the awesome Mother Brain and the Metroids. The latter have the ability to latch onto Samus's body and quickly drain his power. What kind of stupid stuff does that have to say? Menu. There is only the one quest, although you can choose which way you wish to send Samus. They make it sound like you have a choice. And if you want to beat the game, yeah, there's a, some leeway in what order you do stuff, but 
generally you kind of got to do it as they designed. And yeah, you drop down, you can either send Samus left or right. And <laughs> if you go to the right, you can't go anywhere because you don't have the Morph Ball yet. Which is actually the reason the Morph Ball is to the left, because you couldn't go that way in a lot of these games. Every game, you start on the left and you move to the right. So, for a lot of people, that was a secret. You start off the game, and from some fluke of memory or thought, you decide to go to the left instead of going to the right, and you find the Morph Ball. Scoring. There is no scoring. Only the collection of all important power units. Samus starts with 30 units and, collect, and can collect up to 99. With energy tanks, he can add another 100 per tank. Samus is permitted to collect just 6 tanks. So, Adam's influence goes all the way back to there, huh? The other item with a cap on it are missiles, and you can have no more than 255 at any given time. I don't think you can even collect that many missile packs. I know you can have that many if you cheat, but I think the missiles cap out long before then. I think they cap out at like 150 or so, don't they? Okay, in all there are 19 spots to find missiles, 6 to find energy tanks, and 2 to find ice beams. So, <laughs> 19 times 5, that's 50, plus 45, that's 95 missiles total, plus the 75 you get from Crate and Ridley. 150 plus the 95, that's uh, 245. That's what it maxes out at. You don't fucking care about this shit. Before you do any serious Metroid hunting, you're going to have to roam the underground world to acquire power boosters. Our old friend's power boosters again. You should try to collect them in this order. Maru Mari, missiles, the long beam, the, an energy tank, bombs, the ice beam, more missiles, another energy tank, and Varia. Okay, bye! Yeah, it, it, after that it, it says where they are, but then... Naturally, you would be wise to sketch out a map as you move through the maze. Remember, too, that bombs aren't just for killing. You can also blow holes in walls and floors so you can make your own doors. And that not only does the ice beam paralyze creatures like the Rippers, which cannot be killed, but you can also freeze your enemy rays, such as Ridley's fireballs. You can then use them, these enemies' icicles as stepladders if you wish. That whole section is in parentheses. It's a pretty long <laughs> segment. Um, remember that bombs aren't used just for killing. Yeah. They kind of are required to get through a lot of sections. Yeah, the bombs are good to defend yourself as a ball, but I don't think anybody would use them as their primary method of attack. Once you've obtained all the armaments, head to Brinstar for a showdown with Kraid. Make sure you write down the code that will appear when and if Samus dies. If you punch it into the game when you start over, you'll begin where you left off. Finally, be aware that while it only takes a few blaster shots to get through a blue door, or one, five missiles are required to shoot through a red door. It waits until the end of the first section to say that. Advanced Strategy Once you know the layout of Zebes, the key strategies are defeating the tougher enemies. The best way to fight Metroids is to use the Ice Beam to paralyze them and then kill them with five missiles. The best way to fight Metroids. That's the only way to fight Metroids. Freeze them and shoot them with missiles. That's all you can do. Your only other option is to run, but you can't fight them that way. Another problem is getting into Turian. Actually, there are two shortcuts. After you've beaten the mini-bosses, all you have to do is find the pair of statues in Brinstar, top level, far left side of the tunnel, and hit them with a laser blast. They will grow and allow you to climb to Turian. That's the preferred method. That's the intended method. The second shortcut. They are going to teach you how to sequence break. With no pictures and terrible description. Let's see how well this works. The second shortcut. There's a Rio in the chamber adjoining that of the statues. Lure it to just below the statue platform, freeze it, and jump onto its head. Become a ball, drop a bomb, and hop off of the as the monster explodes. There's a door to the left. Go through it and you're in Turian. 
It's also possible to boost your gunfire at any point by depressing the B button and the select button at the same time. What? This thing is just all... It goes from telling you how to sequence break to showing you... I don't know what the hell that would be described as. Depressing the... See, it's not just pressing the B button, but depressing it. So you, you tell it a sad story. By depressing the B button and the select button at the same time. And to make a high jump without high jump by becoming a ball, dropping a bomb, hitting the A button to become full size again, and being blasted into the air. As soon as you're lost, do a jump and you'll really go flying. Another neat trick is being able to climb up sheer walls over doors. Open a door, move into the frame, and let the door shut on you. Simultaneously hold down the A button and quickly tap on the control button. You'll hop right up the wall. No, you won't. That isn't how it works. You have to press down, up, in. You have to press down, up, down, up, down, up a lot. Because when you pop out of the ball, it's, it sends you up a couple of frames. So you can repeatedly do that. And they're basically telling you how to crash the game. And then they tell you how to get, defeat Ridley. So they're still, they're telling you all the ways that you can you can screw up the game, but they're barely telling you how to destroy the enemies. As for Ridley, a quick way to get rid of the fiend is to note which way he's unleashing fireballs. If they're going up, then down, use your ice to freeze them. Then hop onto the flaming projectiles and blast Ridley using missiles. If the fireballs are angling down and away, position yourself as close as you can to the platform on which he's standing and blow him away. Another tactic that works against Ridley is to go into the chamber and position yourself over the rock that's under the blue gate. Open the gate by shooting it and jump into it as it begins to shut. Not only will Samus become protected from Ridley, but, she, but he can also use missiles to end the mini-boss's murderous career. Par. Not applicable. They couldn't be bothered to figure out a par for Metroid. Like, what the average player would be able to complete. I mean... The average player should be able to... beat Kraid, at least, I think. Kraid isn't that hard, once you have enough missiles and everything. And he has advantage! The advantage allows your basic gun unit to fire more rapidly. Otherwise, it isn't a dramatic improvement. Training tips. Apart from your shooting skills, which you can polish by staying near the starting point and plugging zoomers, rios, and the scree. Why are they called the scree? The only one that's defined as the. You'll need to become proficient at jumping up and down the vertical passages. Practice this by clearing a passageway of monsters and then just hopping from ledge to ledge. For descents, you should be skimming the ends of ledges as you drop, barely landing on each. Rating. This game is truly an adventure. There's a lot to discover, a lot to shoot, and a lot that tries to terminate you. Challenge A. Graphics B. Sound effects B. Oh. My god. So, Metroid, set in the year 2005. Oh, man. They tell you more about how to break the game than actually beat the game. I mean, because something like Metroid... You really kind of need a map to see where everything is, and you need a full, full walkthrough. They could have at least told you a couple of sections, because they don't talk about, like, where the really hard parts are. They don't tell you about how to defeat Mother Brain. Now, there's one section in the Special Edition, Extra Special Edition Editions, Edition Additions, for Castlevania. Okay, okay, we didn't want to tell you how to beat the count. There's got to be some challenge, right? But here it is. Get thyself to a point as high as his head and start pitching your boomerang at said noggin. It's the best way to defeat him. The first form, maybe. But once he's done, you want to use the holy water on a second form because that thing will just fuck you up. Uh, anyway... Well, I guess that's it for this episode. Episode. Am I really going to keep doing this? Anyway, well, maybe. Um, if you guys like it, 
I'll, I'll, I'll keep looking through this thing and find some gems. Uh, if there's any other games you want me to check out, just leave a comment below. And, uh, later.